Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the new shed. Now it's far from finished. In fact, it's nowhere near finished. However, it's at the stage now where we need to move in, move stuff in, boxes, storage, that kind of stuff, my tools, all, all the stuff from the other shed. And before we actually fully move in, I need to wire it. Now in terms of wiring, I'm gonna keep it pretty basic, pretty simple. This wall only, and maybe a little bit at the back, I'll have sockets, the metal clad sockets, and maybe a USB one at the bottom down there. See how things go, and it's all gonna be run in uh, plastic conduit. So it's very simple, very basic. The lights as well, I'm gonna have a switch at the door here, just behind you, and that'll operate this light and another light. I've already gone and fit one light. It's not wired up yet, but I've just installed it, just to see uh, how it looks and how it feels. Uh, I'm gonna put another one over there, and I'll put another two-way switch in the corner down there so that once I'm actually all the way in and down there, if I need to turn the light off for any reason, maybe flip another lamp on or anything like that, I'll have the two-way two switch in. I don't have to get up and come over and turn it off here and walk back in darkness or anything. I'll grab the camera, go down the other side of the shed, and on the bench I've laid out all the ingredients that we're going to be cooking with today. Running right to left quickly, we've got some cable there, some clips for the lights, which I'll show you how they work in a sec. The uh, five metal clad socket, double sockets, conduit at the back, we've got some two, switch, two switches there for the lighting, two way that I was going to be using, uh, some whisker boxes for the lights, various couplers, um, clips and glands and saddles and stuff like that, we've got a fuse box board going in and the unimportant cup of tea. We follow the light down here, you can see I've already marked out some uh, pencil marks here and here, centre of the ridge and that's where the next light's going to go. In terms of connecting the cables up, I've just put them through this whisker box here and uh, up here we'll have the power come in. I've left that for a bit of uh, additional in case I need some power coming out at a later date. Because uh, it's a bit awkward to mess about with uh, when it's up on the actual, on the timber, but if I put one in there now it's easy enough. So left you can see I've put some uh, ferrules on and I'll put some on the right just for a bit of virtual signalling. And up and over the top of it we'll probably run the cable for the two-way light. So there's a lighting cable done and through to the consumer unit and it's just coming down this conduit here and as you can see the lights are up and on and working nice and bright and that's going to give us enough light so I can crack on with the sockets. I won't show you how wide the light's up because I'm pretty ashamed of it at the moment but I mean it's pretty safe it's just it's connected to an extension lead but basically because I haven't got the board done yet. With the lights being on it's bright enough in here now and I don't have to mess around with torches and temporary lights and stuff so I've got the uh, laser level set up along the back there and you can see I'm just going to put probably three sockets across the bench, two across over there, one for the um, charges and stuff over there. And I've also got a one gang two way switch over there, and that's going to do the two way lighting from here to the door.
You can see I've got the bent sockets first fixed now and I'm just going to get a little bit creative in the corner for the lights where it goes up into the ceiling. It will be in cable on the on the run at the top on the ceiling there on the roof but uh, just going up there I'm just going to cut a couple of bends down and see if I can't make it a little bit more adventurous. It's only a radial circuit anyway, so I'm not having to worry about going back through the same conduit or even going back, going back at all really with it being a radial. Um, yeah, nice and easy. Hardest bit is just to get over that, overcome that little, little um, shroud or cap that's inside there. Uh, it's pretty much the sockets first fixed at least. Um, obviously, I've got pick this up. Got bits to seal off down there. Uh, I've got a bit of um, box trunking that's going to go in there. White trunking that'll go up inside it, and that'll also hide some light cables and stuff like that. But that's basically the first fix of the sockets done. Obviously when it comes to second fixes, there's a multitude of different tools you can use, all as good as each other for various different reasons. Uh, everyone has their own particular way of doing things and quickest way or whatever. No messing for me. This is what I've been using for forever really, just side cutters, but you can use the other ones as well. The ideal cable strippers there are all right to use. What we're going to do here is just cut off a little bit of sleeve in here. Can't see what you can see there. Can you see that? I'll cut off a little bit of sleeve in. Cut the end off that. Bit of sleeve in off. Send that all the way down. And what we're going to do is just pinch this side over a bit. loop back on itself. Um, don't need all that. Sleeve it back over there. There you go. Again, you can pretty much guess if you keep doing it as as often. You can guess how much you need, you don't need to start measuring or anything like that. Send that back down there and that 
that little V that we made, that little nick in the sleeving, that will go straight in the back box lug. And you can just push it in like that and it's nice, nice tight connection on it. And there it is. So it's, you're safe in the knowledge that your back box is connected to earth and you've brought the earth forward as well. Love these cutters as well, by the way. Wife got me these uh, anniversary present last year. They're not cheap. Yeah, I love using these. Okay, and you can see, you can just manipulate the cable nice and easy like that, and it's ready for the um, ready for the front to go on. In this case, it's a USB one. A little bit of virtue signaling with the CPC. Socket's all wired up now, as you can see, no conductor showing or anything. A couple of holes in the bottom of the back box. That's just because of where I had it situated in the other shed. You can see the CPC coming back on itself there, that little V we did. Um, and that's just connecting the back box, uh, making a connection to, uh, to the back box. So I'm going to crack on now and get on with all these. If you want to know what this is for, it's just to add a bit of symmetry, just to make it all look kind of whatever. I might, I don't know, I'll leave it on, I'll probably leave it on there. This is just the switch for the lights going up. Doing a few evenings after work and I'm pretty much there now. The sockets are on and done, the lights are on and done, the board is probably 99% done. And obviously I've started to move stuff in now, shelving and tools and other bits and pieces that are going to stay in here. Start to organise the shed, I'll grab the camera and show you. Well there's the light switch done, the two way over the bench. And it's just going up there, like I said, terminating and coming across and going over, over the ridge. I've actually managed to use a metal clip there as well for to be a super spark. Found a handful, so I thought I'd just use them. Um, so yeah, coming across, we've got three double sockets over the bench. One, two, three. That one over there being the USB one. This one's actually plugged in at the moment. We've got the radio on and it's freezing eight degrees coming across over here we've got another socket here and that's not necessarily going to be for the chops or anything because i've got other plans for things going on in this area but i just i knew i needed a socket there over here like i said i was going to put one i pan back a second i was going to put one here for the charges and everything but i thought i'll keep this space over this way, keep the charges this way, because this, this isn't always going to be here. So um, they could probably get wall mounted or something in the future. But for now, I've tucked it to the side. Obviously, I've messed up a bit here and knocked out the wrong knockout, but just threw a blind grommet in there just to look after it. Um, I guess at some point as well, on this white boxing in, this white trunking, I might drop down outside for a, an outside socket. Um, but yeah, not yet. All right, let's have a look at the board using a fuse box eight way uh, obviously i'm only taking up two of them at the moment with the sockets and the lights shout out to consumer unit world for hooking me up with these rcbo's last minute last thing thank you guys so we've got a 20 amp there and a six amp there and that's for the sockets and lights like i said some blanks in here i will put some more circuits in here so obviously you know some i'll need some other rcbo's as the as we expand in things in here uh, at the moment i'm only using a 1.5 flex supply cable uh it's just running to the back of the socket the back of the house uh and just basically you can see i've clipped it up there as well basically it's literally minus five at the moment outside um i'm not digging the floor up <laughs> i'm not going to start digging for armored cable at the moment uh and for what i'm using in here it's only i'm only using like lights and uh, charges stuff like that so I'm, I'm fine with it at the moment so that's the shed pretty much wired now i told you it was basic and simple just five double sockets two lights two light switches and a consumer unit um right thank you so much for watching as usual give it a thumbs up if you want or a thumbs down leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'll see you next time bye now